out. Here's some specs. circuit it comes from over here and I ran it into here and the defrost goes on Let's see the terminals uh, goes on 3 and N and this is a 220 volt system I put 40 frost on it and I've got them for 17 minutes each. You set the defrost, the amount of defrost by pushing this copper arrow down, moving it back and forth, and I'm going to leave it at about, yeah, I think it's 15 minutes, plenty. So, 24 hour dial, four times a day, it goes on a 16 minute defrost. Here's my sight glass. The nice thing about refrigeration is subcooling is figured out right there. It's very easy. Um, I did ask a, a Copeland rep about that, about why Carrier didn't put sight glasses on the liquid line to so you wouldn't have to check subcooling. And he said that would work fine, but it just would cost extra money to put a cyclist in there. And when he checks subcooling, from what I understand, it's to provide a solid liquid column to the expansion device. And here you can see it's totally solid. If the condenser was dirty, was low on refrigerant. We get, uh, we get fully condensing the uh, uh, liquid refrigerant, and then we get bubbles in the sight glass, the cavitation. But it's, it looks good. It's a good Emerson dryer filter, Alco. And let's see what my my evaporator is showing up now. It's been running down to 11 which is a bit low but I did turn the temperature control colder to keep it running because it did shut off on me before that's fundamentally the, what the system looks like now let's do this let's put it on the frost and we'll see what our amperage is on the frost so when this pin comes around here Now, 
compressors. What's happening now is the compressor is pumping down. We got a uh, pump down solenoid on it. And you can see it's pumping down and it will shut off on the pressure control right here. That just shut the compressor off. And my suction pressure right now is 10. If it builds up a little bit more, it will kick in again and pump it down. Now my number three is my uh, defrost heating elements, and I'm drawing 11 and a half amps, which is good. That's showing me that the defrost heaters are working good. Now I'm going to take it off the frost and. Stop and the compressor, the load is low on it right now. But that's pretty much my system here. This old unit, <laughs> this old unit was uh, sitting on this wood, and somebody came along and spray foamed this quite a few years ago. And I literally had to get a the foam all the way, chop it out, get at it. These, these old wooden walking coolers were made out of, uh, a lot of them had fiberglass insulation, but early ones had uh, cork, brown cork. And it, was a, it was about, you know, that thick. Remember when I was a little kid, my father had that piles of cork insulation in our garage uh, that he was uh, using on a job someplace. It was just brown cork. The fiberglass insulation they used after that, what happened was is they would get it would get waterlogged with uh, condensation because the cool is so cold and, and moisture would infiltrate in through the wood and they would, it would just get soggy and wet and very heavy and, and, um, and of course it would, when it's wet it just will transfer heat right out of it that may be why somebody years back I don't know how many years ago put this uh, foam on it to help it out okay okay here's something I wanted to point out um, it's this Copeland mobile app it's I really like it. It's an excellent idea. And it gives me an opportunity to check on the compressor that I have, whatever, whichever one I'm working on. And this shows our capacity in BTUs. It's just under one ton. It's 10,000 BTUs. And it's at a 20 degree evaporator. Now this compressor can also be used as a freezer, a minus 10 evaporator. And of course you see it's a big reduction in BTUs. Um, using it as a freezer. The condenser temperature, this is the most important. I, I, I really uh, appreciate this a lot. This shows what the return gas temperature should be. And here it's 40 degrees. And I don't know if you remember on my gauges, I had 36.7, which is close enough. Now, I feel that Copeland should put this on every, this number, return gas temperature number, on every compressor that they have. What it is pretty much is it's your superheat um, temperature for this compressor. It gives you a range uh, to be close to. Uh, if the superheat is too cold, too low, you're flooding liquid back to the compressor. You're slugging. And that'll, uh, the liquid refrigerant's dry. It's a dry fluid. Uh, it doesn't have much any lubrication in it, and it'll mix with the uh, the oil. The, instead of having 140 viscosity, it'll reduce it down quite a bit, and you'll seize up the bearings in the compressor, or seize up the piston rods on the crankshaft, or break a piston rod. So if, if your if your superheat is too high, what'll happen is is the compressor it needs the refrigerant coming back. And uh, to cool the motor off, um, and if you're too high, that means you're running it too warm, uh, and that'll 
overheat the motor inside the compressor. All of us we've seen compressors over the years where you can literally cook an egg on the head of the compressor. The compressor is running so hot, and uh, it's it, it means the, co the compressor will run for a couple of years, and then it'll the whining will burn out or it, something will happen like that. Um, so it shortens the lifespan. Instead of getting seven, eight, nine, ten years out of the compressor, you might get two years or three years out of the compressor. So it's, this is a very important number. I'm, I'm really happy to see this. Um, okay. okay, now my TD is 12. Plus frame is 12 and 13. That's good. Since I'm running it so cold right now, it's I've got a 14 degree evaporator. It superheats 15. And my air temperature, uh, the beer is down to 24 degrees, which is too cold. If I leave it like this, it'll uh, probably freeze the tops off. It's 23 degrees right now. I don't want that. Let's see. Let's... Yeah, the air coming out is 20. And going in is 32. So I have a 12 degree, 12, 13 degree temperature difference, which is good. I, Delta T here is down to, it's 11, 12. It's, it'll, as the expansion valve opens and closes, it'll go up and down, but it's ranging between uh, 13 down to 11. So 12 is pretty good right here, mid-range. But it all looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy. My T1 is 29. That's the uh, suction temperature. Leaving the evaporator.